today's show, we're going to be taking a look at two new games that got physical releases almost 30 years after the original Sega Genesis and Mega Drive was released. My name's Mike, and this is the Retro Gamer Boy Show. <laughs> Welcome back to the Retro Game Boy Show. Today we're going to be taking a look at these two games here. I've been shopping on Pixel Heart again. I picked up the last two games that you can buy on Pixel Heart. That's Magic Pockets and Generals of the Yang Family Clan of Heroes. Now I already have two more games that I picked up from Pixel Heart. We reviewed those in depth. Those were Water Margin and Magic Warrior. And the reason why I buy my games from Pixel Heart are because of the quality. Look at these spines. Usually it's a black spine or a red spine or a blue spine that we get with the Mega Drive. But here they have full color artwork spines and they just look amazing. So today we're gonna to do something slightly different. We'll quickly unbox these two games. I'll show you what you get with them. And then we're gonna go and do a real time playthrough of both of these games. We won't play them to the end, but I'll do enough to give you impressions, my first impressions of what gameplay's like, audio's like, and of course, what the graphics are like. So to start off with, let's check out Generals of the Yang Family Clan of Heroes. So again, the reason why I buy from Pixel Heart is because the quality of their physical products are absolutely amazing. The box here feels like a real Mega Drive Genesis box. The, the plastic, the see-through plastic that we can see here is very much like the original hard wearing. And the same with the clamshell build quality as well. It's very, very high. They also do amazing artwork, absolutely fantastic artwork. Whilst it's not the same as the original Mega Drive and Genesis covers, they have this kind of inspired by with the logo up here and 16-bit cartridge stuff down here. The same with the backgrounds. It's more like the original Gen 1 Mega Drive and Genesis games with that black checkered box. And then you find your screenshots and the details down the back here. So very authentic feeling whilst not being exactly the same. And of course, we get a manual and we get the cartridge as well. So the quality again, the build quality is the reason why I've been buying from, from Pixel Art. So that is Generals of the Yang Family Clan of Heroes. The other one here is Magic Pockets. And again, high quality artwork on the front here. In fact, back in the day, I don't know if anyone else did the same, I used to buy my games when I was a teenager, often based on the screenshots on the back of the cover and the front cover artwork. And I would probably have picked up both of these games just on the artwork. I wouldn't have bothered going to the local store to read the magazine to get the review. I would have looked at the artwork there and said, yes, this must have been a good game. But we'll find out in a minute if these both are as good as their cover artwork. So we are, we are playing uh, Clans of Heroes, Generals of the Yang family. Um, this game, I don't know much about it actually. I don't know when the release date was. I don't know when it was originally uh, made and who made it. Uh, I did a brief look around on the internet. I couldn't find any information there. I do know that in 2017, Pico Interactive acquired the rights for it. They did a ton of work on the game. They fixed a load of game breaking bugs put in a load of polish in there, improved the logic of the game, uh, and, and re-released it on the Sega Mega Drive in Europe and the US uh, in 2017. Uh, and that this game is a beat-em-up. Uh, so we're gonna play through this, I'll give you my impressions, my real-time impressions of what the game is like. It's the first time I'm actually playing it, so I'll give you an idea of what the graphics are like, uh, what my thoughts on the sound is like, and, and of course, on the gameplay. Uh, just to start off here, Looking at the demo intro here, uh, is a nice bit of polish. We've got a bit of cutscene going on here. Um, there's a store demo happening, and this is a, a really nice extra that you didn't get on, on all Mega Drive games. So I really like the fact that we're getting an intro to the actual game. It looks like we're getting intros into the characters and what their abilities are. And I have to say, it looks pretty cool. So uh, let's jump into the game and see what it's actually like. Right, Clan of Heroes, Generals of the Yang family. So we've got two players, easy or hard. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play easy because I don't know how hard this game actually is. Right, one player, yes please. Ooh, we've got a choice of characters here. It would have been nice to have seen all the characters. It looks like we've got four. 
And I am going to play... I'm going to play Moo. Let's play Moo. I'm guessing she's a fast combat fighter, which I really like. Uh, and off we go. We're straight into it. So what do we got here? So B is attack. C is jump. And C and B is kick. And does A do anything? Okay, A does a special move. And... A looks like it's a special move like in Streets of Rage 2. So it takes some of your health off. Right, let's get into the uh, into the crux of this game. Can we do anything else in this game? Right, we can hold, but we can't jump or... Okay, let's see what else we can do. We can't do... We can do an attack. So when you hold them, you can do your special, I think. You must be able to do something else. You must be able to attack them. Let's see if we can get into another another grapple. This guy looks like it. Okay, so if you attack while you're holding them, you throw them. And does that do more or less damage? Okay, it does quite a bit of damage. It looks like it does double... Is it doing double damage? It looks like it's doing a bit more damage than if you do your normal attack. So obviously throw there is a decent uh, attack move to use. I've got to say off the bat, the sound effects for hitting are quite poor. Uh, it doesn't doesn't feel like I'm making contact with the actual enemies. I mean, if this was a beefier, like, knife slash or, you know, punch sound, I think it would feel like I'm actually hitting these characters. But at the moment, it feels quite... It feels light. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like I'm making contact with them. Uh, characters and art-wise, I love... Actually, I quite like the uh, art in the background. There's a, quite a lot of detail in the background. But funnily enough, that art style that we've got in the background here isn't replicated with the characters. There's not a huge amount of pixel density. Like, the pixels are nice and big, and they're, they're drawn okay. The animation could maybe be a slightly better. Um, but there's the pixel density, the amount of uh, information in the pixels describing the characters isn't the same as, as the background, uh, which I guess makes them stand out a bit. Maybe that's what they wanted, but it would have been nice to have seen a little bit more uh, pixel density in there. Actually, I should compare this to uh, Golden Axe to see if the main character has as much detail or more detail in it than the Golden Axe characters, because I love those characters, especially the uh, Golden Axe 2 characters. They had a, a bit of a, a jump up in pixel density and quality. Right, so far, gameplay-wise, it's okay. I'd say at the moment it feels like a 6 or 7 out of 10 beat-em-up. Um, you know, it's not blowing me away. Uh, in fact, I'm spending more time looking at the background than I am at the, at the combat. It just goes to show, actually, from a combat point of view, it's, it's, it's not as intense. Um, it's not as pressured as, say, playing something like Streets of Streets of Rage 2 um, or even Paprium which whilst I haven't got my copy yet I did manage to get my hands on a version from a friend to play it uh, and you know that's that's pretty spectacular so I'd say this falls right in the middle of, of beat-em-ups you know it's not it's not the best one and it's definitely not the not the worst one so if you're a fan of beat-em-ups it might be worth picking up if you're a fan of only getting great games it's probably not worth picking up this looks good actually. We've got a change of environment. We've gone from a nice and peaceful village background into a castle on fire. <laughs> We've not gone in to help, obviously. We've gone in to make uh, make things worse. We're we're stopping the relief effort by uh, taking out the uh, the people that were sent to help. I'm guessing this is a boss battle because that guy looks a lot bigger than everyone else and he's got a weapon and he's doing decent attacks. My character keeps on throwing a knife on the floor. I wonder if that does... Yeah, I think that does a secondary attack. So I think I stab, stab, and then as they fall on the ground, you throw the knife on the floor and it does another attack, which is quite nice, having a secondary motion to the actual attack. Oh, this is nice. Do you know what? The thing I, I do appreciate about this game, actually playing this, is the presentation. The presentation is a, a little notch above the rest. Like, even Street, Fi uh, Street Fighter, Streets of Rage 2 didn't have this much presentation in terms of, of story going on and 
mid cutscenes and cutscenes at the beginning, uh, you know, or at least this is on par with Streets of Rage 2 with, with its presentation here. So I really like this actually. This this seems to be, you know, whilst the gameplay, I'd say is like six or seven out of 10, I'd say like presentation, visuals in some places, like seven, eight out of 10. You can see here we've got all the normal tropes as well from other modern beat-em-ups that you find on the Mega Drive. So we can collect food. There, we've, I think there was a necklace in one of those barrels, so that must be for points. So uh, that's that's quite nice. Yeah, look, she throws a knife on the floor, and that's a, I think that's more of like it. She's got a, a CQC attack, and then her knife on the floor is kind of like a, a ranged attack. So that's actually quite cool that we've got this secondary secondary attack link to her her main attack. I guess you could say that's the three button combo. So let's try it. One, two, three. No, one, two, three. Yeah. So if you press three button, uh, the attack button three times, you, you get the uh, the knife throw. So that's the three button combo that we have. And again, I'm looking at the backgrounds here. Really nice, really nice. They've done such a great job on them actually. We've got this kind of 3D doorway there. We've got all of this uh, uh, texture on the background with some nice murals and statues happening. So it, it feels really nice as you're going through the levels. It's taking up the whole screen. Like it's not it's not full of fluff. If you play like something like Double Dragon on the Mega Drive, you'll get a big swathe of blue sky or just the same tree repeated in the background, right? It's not bad, but it's 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 kind of lazy, lazy background art. Um, whereas this has actually got quite a lot of detail, like in the floor, we've got a foreground element here, which we go behind, which is really nice. You know, adds some depth to the whole environment. Uh, and then we've got these nice background elements over here. Is that food? It looked like food. Right, let's use some of our special moves. We've not used those at all. Let's use a jump as well. I haven't used the jump much. So one thing I'm noticing about the jump actually is that the jump, no matter when you press the button, animation-wise, happens at the same point. So what this means is that I can't jump and press kick quickly and it triggers a, a jump attack. Um, I have to wait until it hits the point where the animation wants to play the jump, which means I've got to... I can't just do it here. There we go. I, so I actually tried to jump there, and she didn't jump. You have to give. You have to have some distance between you and the enemy before you can actually perform that attack. So it's not. It's not as sophisticated. Some of the more modern beat 'em ups that you got on the Mega Drive and Genesis, where you could uh, jump and then press uh, the attack button, and you'd get an attack straight away. It's a, a little bit more simplistic. Can I dash actually? don't think I can dash. So no, you can't dash either. That would be nice if you could have dashed and done a run attack. And the special move's okay. So when you press the special move normally, if it doesn't hit anyone, you don't lose any life. But it seems when you hit someone, you lose life. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. Spikes with a chain. So uh, it looks like we can uh, go back to the title screen or give up. Okay, left and right allows you to select that. Let's see if we get gruesomely killed here. I'm hoping we do. Oh! They could have done a, a nice gruesome attack there. Actually, throughout the game, there, there's no blood or anything. So um, it was kind of like your family-friendly version of a beat-em-up. Right, uh, I think we got a good overview of what the game is here. It's a, a standard beat-em-up with some really nice presentation. Audio, sound effects weren't great. I would have loved to have some better audio effects in there for punching and attacking. I think they would have made the attacks feel more impactful, more connection to the actual battle that's going on screen. Um, and the audio track, the music track in the background, again, I think much like the gameplay, it's like, it's not inoffensive, it, but it doesn't blow you away, right? So uh, I'd say like, feels like a, a solid uh, seven out of 10, or a retro Gamer Boy coin. It would be a, a silver coin probably for, um, for Clan of Heroes, Generals of the Yang family. Right, let's go check out our other game, which is called Magic Pockets. 
If you're enjoying the video so far, make sure you hit that little like button and leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of this new format and of these new games coming out for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. And if you can share this video and help grow the channel, that would be amazing. It would be great to get all fans of Sega Genesis and Mega Drive here in the community learning about these brand new games coming out for the consoles we love. So this has been done by Just Prod. Now, I think Just Prod, I don't know if he's an individual or if it's a company, but he, they, they or him or her uh, seem to do a lot of these ports uh, from other games, other consoles to the Sega Maker Drive and Genesis. Now, from what I know about this game, this is a Bitmap Bros game. So these are the guys that did Chaos Engine and Renegade, who is a UK company. They're the guys that um, published the game back in the day. And it came out on the Amiga, uh, on uh, MS-DOS and, and a number of other platforms. But it wasn't until 2018 when we got Pico Interactive again bought the rights to this game. I think it was Pico Interactive at least, but someone bought the rights to this game anyway. Uh, and they published it on the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. So uh, an official game made by a, a very big company back in the day, uh, finally getting its officially licensed port onto the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive uh, in, in you know, like 20 years later, 30 years later actually, almost when it originally came out. Um, so it's a platform game and that's all I know about it. Um, and actually looking at here, we've got a, a little demo or is this me now playing? Oh, I'm actually playing. I go straight into the game. I didn't even press any buttons. I'm straight in the game. It looks like a Bitmap Bros game, right? They, they had this kind of very trademark, uh, trademark art style. Um, so it feels, uh, or at least looks like a Bitmap Bros uh, game. I know nothing about this. <laughs> I didn't read the instruction manual. So we're gonna, we're gonna feel our way through this game. Right, B is jump, C does nothing, and A does this kind of attack. I don't know what that is. What's he throwing? It looks like he's throwing like spinning tops and then something comes out of his pocket I don't know it's actually quite bizarre I don't know what's happening here I don't know what the storyline behind it is I have to I have to read up on it um, so far feels like a, actually feels like a very much like an Amiga game uh, it's got that art style that I remember from certain like British Amiga games uh, again actually the art style reminds me of uh, Speedball uh, again another bitmap bros game that art style of uh, the blues and oranges that we can see on the screen there feels uh, very much in the same vein in fact i wouldn't be surprised if it's the same artist so our attack here has got some distance to it you can't just attack in front of you it's not like a cqc attack here we are close quarters attack it's uh, more of a you throw something and then it um it actually attacks a, a distance away in front of you. We've got collectibles here. That's for score. That's weird. When I fall down from a height, I kind of bounce. Oh, what was that in his pocket? Oh, so hanging. If you hold down A, something grows in his pocket, <laughs> uh, and it looks like I can do a bigger attack. Okay, we'll try that in a minute. Can I get up here without being hit? So some of these enemies take a few attacks to, to take down. Others seem to be uh, gone within the first hit. I've got to say, it's super abstract. I'm, I'm not entirely sure who I am, why I'm here, what I'm doing, and what it is that I'm chucking out of my pocket here. They look like mini tornadoes. And when I fall down from a height, I seem to kind of like bounce like a ball. I don't know if that's an attack move I can use later on. We'll have to see. Let's try to do a big attack, see what that does. Oh. Nothing. Ooh. Ooh. That's interesting. So the bigger attack there, it first it dizzied the person, the enemy. And then when I did it again, it seems to have uh, ingested it and turned it into something. Oh, what have I done? I've done something and I don't know how to get out. Oh, I'm out of it. What did I do there? Okay. So I pressed down. And it's showing me something. I guess it's showing me a layer of the area. Like a map of the area. 
and those stars perhaps they're enemies um, and that green thing maybe is me and then what do I have to press a gets me out of it let's see if that's right yeah okay so that looks like it's like a map or something uh, right let's get this rid of this guy so graphically, I mean, it, it feels like an old Amiga game, uh, Amiga 500 game, which is not a bad thing. I really like the Amiga. Obviously, the Amiga was able to produce um, some better visuals than the uh, than the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive back in the day. Um, it's it's nicely drawn, actually. It's a little abstract, I gotta say. Uh, jumps feel nice, um, if not a little weird. And the same with the attack. The attack feels nice. Uh, you just got to get used to the fact that this isn't a... It's, it, it's a projectile. But it's a projectile that has an arc to it. Uh, can I go in that doorway? No. Can I do the same with the TV? Ooh. <laughs> oh, I got hit there. Okay. Got a star. I don't know what the star does. Ooh. I, that was some kind of hat. Oh, what happened there? Oh, no. I missed whatever was there. Should have been uh, keeping my eye on what was happening. I was distracted. It kind of warped me. Oh, now I got caught by a bubble. I don't know where that's come from. I should have... Uh, oh, I got distracted there. There was something else there. It looked like a face mask or something. I don't know if that was an actual power-up or if that was uh, more of the score that you could get. Oops. Oh, oops, oops. Getting hit there quite a bit. Can I go through this doorway? Down? No. Okay, so I can't go through the doorway there. There's a licorice all sort. <laughs> For those who don't know what licorice all sort is, a sweet in the UK. I don't know if you get it in the US. There's a. How do I get that bike? I want that bike. Can I attack? Wee! Wee! That was good. So I did an attack. And then I was jumping around and I landed on top of this spinning top, whatever it is. Uh, and it kind of spanned me up. So that, that looks like another move. Can I get on this bike? Yes. Can I? Oh, I can't move. Oh, I can. <laughs> that was pretty cool, actually. So I've got to say, like I said, it's a little bit abstract, the gameplay here. But I'm getting used to what it is I'm, I'm doing it. It is fundamentally just a platform game. Um, there's an interesting attack. We've got this, this arced projectile move. It looks like we can combine projectile moves together. Uh, and there's objects that we can use within the world. So we use that bike. Uh, we use the bubblegum maker. And you have to press down to be able to do that. So actually, this is not... I mean, it's not a fast, not a fast-paced platformer like Sonic. It, it is actually feel, feels a lot like some of those Amiga games that you would get. A little bit more considered, uh, a little bit more puzzle uh, element to it, rather than an out-and-out -out just uh, jump, run, and, and kill kind of gameplay. And it looks like there's some exploration, because there was another pathway I could have taken right at the beginning of the level there. Uh, but we've gone a completely different way from where it looked like the main... Oops, I'm dying here. Uh, from the main... Um, the main path that the game really wanted me to take it, which was directly down. So, oh look, there's a hat again. Let's see what we can do. Right, it warps me. Get whatever I can. Got the gas. Oh, I'm out. Okay. So I've got gas. I don't know what the gas does. My pocket. Oh look, I can hold it in my pocket. Ha <laughs> ha. Hence magic pockets. Uh, you can put stuff in your pockets and use it for later. It looks like. But I can't. Oh, I can't use it. I can't use my attack while that's in my pocket. So I can hold one item in my pocket. And at the moment, it's the fuel. So if I put the fuel there. And then attack here. I'm guessing I need the fuel. The fuel must be like a key. Right? The fuel must be like a key. Oh, we've got another hat. Uh, do we take this and lose the fuel? Let's try it. Let's try it. It's not. <laughs> I got. I got something defensive now. Oh look! So I went to put down the gas to fight, but I didn't. I had to put down the mask first. So I can't have 
multiple things. It, 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 it kind of stacks them. It stacks your power-ups or your collectibles. Which is interesting. So do I have to take out all the enemies, then come back and collect those? Let's find out. Oh, oh, oh. I messed that up. Right, okay. Let's see if we can come... Oh, I can smash through there. That's, that looks like it's a shortcut. So let's go get this stuff. Right, we've got the gas. We've got the helmet. Let's go down here. Let's drop all that. Let's see if we can get down again. If I put, oh no, it always puts the helmet down. I thought if I'd collect the helmet first and then the gas, it would drop the helmet, the gas first, then the helmet. But it didn't. It seems to have uh, uh, got some more. Oh, the helmet's gone. Do you know what? I wonder if that was some kind of attack weapon because it had lots of spikes on it. I wonder if I had run with it, if I would have done a load of damage to people. Oh, I should have tried that out, shouldn't I? Right, okay. Let's try uh, get this gas down. Let's see if this actually has any any reason for being. I've got a feeling the gas must be some kind of um, key that I need to unlock things. Or not, and I would have carried around the gas for no reason. But it definitely feels like there's a, a puzzle element to this whole game. Oh, we're dead. We're dead. Let's see if I can continue and where it starts off. It starts off from the beginning again. Okay, so what, for what I can see... Uh, it's a sound solid puzzle game um, and platformer. I'm pretty sure that gas allows me to do something else. There were, there were different obviously power-ups we saw there. We had the hat. I think I could have charged with that hat. We had the bike where we could run over everything which actually felt awesome. Um, the animation, the speed, the sound effects, that felt all, all great. We found the TV and the bubble gum. So it is a more considered platform game. The visuals are really nice, actually. Again, for a Mega Drive, a little dull on the colours. You know, it's not as bright as Sonic, but it's still, you know, graphically well executed. It feels like a Bitmap Brothers, um, Bitmap Brothers game. Gameplay, I really enjoy this. I'm going to sit down probably and play this all today now and see how far I can get, what those items are. I'm, I am certain those items must be for use with other things you know you collect the a and take it to b and then b opens open c i'm i'm pretty sure that's what that's all about there uh, and i like the fact that there seems to be different kinds of uh, attack uh, and weapons that you can use and, and obviously magic pockets magic pockets refers to the fact that his pocket's huge and he can stick stuff in it uh so i get i get the title now um so yeah overall i quite like this game i'd say it's not like your traditional uh, action-based uh, platformers it's a more considered puzzle-based uh, platformer um, but if you like platformers definitely worth picking up actually music's nice visuals are nice and uh, I'm sucked in I need to play more Magic Pockets great game Clan of Heroes and Magic Pockets two very different games one a beat-em-up where the developers pretty much unknown release date unknown and is a fairly solid 7 out of 10 silver coin retro gamer boy game and then we have magic pockets a platform game from a well-respected very successful publisher and developer and i gotta say it's out of the two games it's the game that's got me hooked it's a game that i'm going to go back straight after this video and play a ton of I love the fact that it's a platform, a little slower, and it has these puzzle elements in there, and it looks like there's a ton to discover. It doesn't look like your standard run-of-the-mill platformer where you've got to jump and attack and that's it. There seems to be a lot more to this game to discover, and I can't wait to find out more about it. Now, if you've enjoyed this show, if you love retro gaming, the Sega Genesis and Sega Mega Drive, and you're new to the channel, why not consider subscribing? You can do this by clicking on a little button just below this video. And we put out brand new retro gaming videos every single Monday. And so that you never miss one, make sure you hit the little bell as well. Now, if you can't wait until Monday, don't worry, because we got a huge back catalogue of retro gaming videos for you to enjoy. Two of which you can watch over here.